We're Laura and Aaron, and three years ago, we set out looking for a simple life of freedom in nature. We didn't have any money, but we managed to build this cabin on wheels out of scrap wood and drove until we reached the mountains. Ever since, we spent our days exploring forests and meadows and parking our little home out here on the wild side. So after around three years of living in our cabin on wheels, we thought it's about time we give you a little tour. Yeah, our van's a Renault Master. It was originally a minibus when we got it and it took us about three months to convert all by ourselves um, and costing around £1,300. Yeah, the reason it was really cheap to convert is just because almost everything in here was upcycled. Um, so we just wanted it to be a super environmentally friendly conversion. Yeah, and also we had no money, so <laughs> we just had to do it as cheaply as possible. Anyway, come have a look inside. of our home. Yeah, one of our favourite things to do is lie on the bed and open the back doors and just take in all the beautiful views. Yeah, and also it's super comfy. It's like 15 centimetres of pure comfort and memory foam. Yeah, so. and it's not a fixed bed. Um, it does turn into sofas, so we'll just show you how that works now. After putting away our duvet and blankets, we pull off the bed sheets and stack up our cushions. You can see that our double bed is made up of seven memory foam cushions, which we cut out to piece together perfectly as an L-shaped sofa. This section of our bed here folds back on a piano hinge. We then remove these little bed legs from their latches and tuck them away in our storage underneath. Finally, we put our cushions back in place to create a sofa. So this is our daytime camper van set up. It's a really nice resting area during the day because of all these windows around and we also get a load more extra floor space as well. We have a little fold out table by the sofa here. We just unhook this strap and use this plank of wood to prop it up. During our conversion we put aside our favourite pieces of reclaimed wood with grains that we found particularly magical. We ended up using all those pieces to make the table. We love how it turned out with all of its character and wobbly edges. Now for the storage. Up here we took away all of the bulkiest things like duvets, blankets and towels. Despite living in a tiny home we have plenty of storage space. We've got like all of our books here. We keep clothes in this little cupboard and behind the table. Um, we also keep clothes in these um, overhead kind of compartments up here. There's tons of storage space under the sofa too, where we keep all our instruments, art gear, our boots, a spare tyre and even an inflatable kayak and somehow there's still room to spare under there. You might notice we have loads of jars in the van, we've got loads of ingredients here because we really enjoy experimenting with our cooking. In these shelves here we keep loads of different herbs and spices. The rest of our food is kept in this upcycled vintage cabinet and down here we keep all our crockery and pans. This foot pump allows us to have running water in our kitchen sink which is pretty tiny but it does the job and the little moon cupboard is where we keep all our cleaning things. setup is actually really simple we've just got a single harbour camping stove which slides out here we tend to like cooking outdoors just so that the smells of the cooking and the condensation don't build up in the van on the windows we keep all of our gas canisters inside this little cupboard we tend not to spend more than about 30 minutes cooking as there are always loads of adventures to be had and we spend so much of our days out wandering in this top cupboard we keep all the cutlery in these little wooden dividers that we built So 
we've got a solar power setup, which means we can be completely off grid. Um, and down here by the driving area is basically where all the electrical system is. So we've got a 220 amp hour leisure battery underneath that box there. And then behind the seat here, we've got a 1000 watt inverter, a solar charge controller, a fuse box and a split charge relay, um, which means we can charge up the system on a cloudy day by driving. We decided to keep all our plugs hidden away so that the wires don't distract from the cozy atmosphere. Our solar setup allows us to charge our phones, laptop and power our fairy lights all at the same time and after three years of van life, we don't really feel like we're missing out on other things that would need more electricity. Since we spend so much time here in the driving area, we thought it deserves to be decorated like the rest of the van. So we gave it a little makeover and this is how it looked before. So to transform the space, we put down a twine rug and made fabric coverings for the gear stick, the driving wheel and the visors, as well as our orange seat covers. We then painted the entire dashboard cream and added loads of little earthy touches like dried flowers, branches and all sorts of precious keepsakes collected from our memories on the road. We don't really have a bathroom in the van. No, we didn't really want to rely on campsites or dumping stations, so we decided not to include a toilet in our build. Yeah, some of you might not want to hear this, um, but how we go to the toilet is easily one of our most <laughs> asked questions, so we're going to talk about it anyway. Um, most of the time we're never too far from a public toilet, so tend to use those. Yes, but if we do need to, we've got our trusty shovel and our biodegradable camping toilet paper, and we of course bury everything because we never yeah. want to leave any trace, but a lot of the time our toilet paper just comes in the bin with us anyway. Anyway. In winter we'll use public showers, but when it's warm enough, this is how we wash. We just get out this big silicone bucket that's kept under the bed and hop inside. We also keep this 10 litre water tank in the back and have a 12 volt camping shower that's powered by our solar electricity. We dunk the shower pump into the water tank and that's how it works, although we are not going to show you that today because it's way too cold here in England. It's also important to mention that we use natural and handmade shower products to make sure we're not damaging nature. Recently we had a little dog called Luffy, she's a toy poodle and is very small as you can see um, which is quite handy when living in a tiny home. We've obviously got to be quite minimalistic with um, everything we have in here so um, we really had to consider all the stuff to buy for her so that there wasn't much clutter about. She sleeps on the cushions in bed with us but has this little carrier for if we need to go shopping or anything. She also has this tiny magic chest filled with her essentials like a hairbrush, flea tablets and a packet of her favourite treats. As you can see in the evening when the light drops, um, we become much more obvious and we don't want the locals uh, knowing that we're wild camping. We like to keep it pretty subtle. So what we do is we've got these curtains here and they just roll down. Once we untie these strings, our curtains just drop down. On the inside, they're a cream upholstery fabric, but on the outside, they're a reflective bubble wrap. This really helps to block out light, but it's also super helpful for insulation on both super cold days and also super hot days. Thanks so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed our little tour. Yeah, and if there is anything at all that you'd like us to cover in more detail, just let us know in the comments and we can pop that in future videos. Yeah, we're going to be sharing lots more of our van life moments on this channel. So if you're interested in slow living, freedom and adventure, make sure you subscribe because there's going to be lots more moments like this. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.